Hello, everyone. I'm Janet Huffman, the author of The Clothesline Code, the story of Civil War spies Lucy Ann and Dabney Walker. The book was illustrated by Tricia Mason, and the publisher is Brandy Lane Publishers. I'm so happy to be here today to celebrate Founders Day with you. As you know, Dabney uh, was one of the founders of your church, and um, the Walker's daughter, Sarah, held her wedding at your church. Before the Walkers uh, lived, settled in Washington, they lived in Virginia. And uh, when the, after the Union Army during the Civil War took over the Northeast corner of Virginia, the Walkers escaped from their slave masters and found freedom in the Union camp. And about a year after they had arrived, Dabney and Lucianne came up with a way to spy for the Union. And I know that you have the book uh, there to read, but I would like to just briefly tell you the story. Dabney was intrigued by the signal flags that the Union Army was using to send messages on the battlefield. So he asked the flagmen how those flags worked. And they explained that the different ways that the flags moved uh, stood for letters and then those letters formed messages. And Dabney was hoping that he and Lucy Ann could come up with their own code for spying because uh, the Union Army was on, on the north side of the river and the Confederate Army was on the south side of the river. And he wanted, he wanted hope that they could be able to send messages across the river. And as they were out, they couldn't use a code that included that involved letters because it was illegal to learn to read and write. So they had to come up with some other way. And as they're thinking and watching the laundry, they thought they could make a code with the laundry. And that's just what they did. They figured out that different colored shirts, a different color shirt would stand for each unit of the Confederate Army. And depending on how those were moved on the clothesline, it would tell how those troops were moving. But using the laundry meant that Lucianne would have to go back into enemy territory. And that bothered Dabney because he was afraid that she might get captured. But Lucianne was determined. And so that was it. And she found a way to sneak across the river and she found, got work in General Lee's headquarters where she could listen to everything that uh, the officers were saying. And then on the, on the other side of the river, Dabney would use field glasses to see how the laundry was moving. And the officers wondered how he was getting all that great information. And so Dabney confided in one of the officers that Lucy Ann was providing that information. Uh, and that's uh, one of the officers uh, looking at the clothesline there. And Lucy Ann and Dabney even figured out how to let, let one another know if the Confederate Army was play, trying to play a trick. So if Lucy Ann close pinned the blankets together at the bottom, that meant that the Confederates were moving troops just to trick the Union. And then at one point, the messages stopped for days and Dabney was just beside himself because he was so worried that something had happened to Lucianne if she'd been put in jail or what had happened. But then finally, the clothes moved again and he knew that Lucy Ann was all right. And they kept sending messages um, until uh, around the end of April. And that's when um, 
the weather was better and General Hooker was going to lead the army into the field against the Confederate army. And I just would like to read to you the last page here. With the onset of spring and good weather, it was time for General Hooker to lead his troops into battle. General Hooker had a bold plan to make the Confederate forces by surprise. Thanks to the walkers, the Union Army was ready. General Hooker's spy unit had given him a clearer picture of the enemy than at any time since the war began. For that, he owed thanks to many, including the brave and dedicated walkers. An officer praised the couple as being among the promptest and most reliable of General Hooker's spies. Lucy Ann and Dabney took tremendous risk to their lives in order to help others on the long journey toward freedom. And Dabney had shipped out with Hooker's um, forces and luckily Lucy Ann was able to make it back across the river to safety. The book also has an afterword that tells about the family's life after the war. And it has references for the quotes used in the story, plus um, lots of other references. And I wanted to just talk a little, actually I wanna to read to you a little bit about the research that I did and I'm gonna read it because it was pretty complicated. I found out about this story back in 2005 when I was researching another book about a little known black Civil War hero, Robert Smalls. I came across an account of a formerly enslaved couple spying for the Union in Virginia by coming up with a code using clothes on a clothesline to signal troop movements. The story was thought to have been written by a Union Army officer, but no one seemed to have proof that the event was true. And many thought it was merely legend. I was intrigued by such an everyday way to spy and by the fact that it involved a husband and wife team. I was determined to someday find out if this story was indeed true. A huge problem with verifying the story was that it didn't include Lucy Ann's first name or Dabney's last name. But luckily, I found newspaper stories in which Civil War officers who served in Virginia told reporters about the clothesline signaling system and about an exceptional army scout they worked with named Dabney. And one of the officers mentioned Dabney's last name, Walker. Once I had a name, I searched ancestry records and newspapers, followed every Google lead I could find, emailed history contacts I had in Virginia, etc. My research also led to a pension request that Dabney made to Congress in which he and others explained in detail his time and achievements with the Union Army. I also learned that Union Captain William H. Payne, who Dabney helped with surveying and map making, had kept Civil War diaries that were at the Washington DC Historical Society. I thought there was a very good chance that Payne would mention the walkers in his diaries, and indeed he did, providing more proof that this amazing story was true. This story has never before been told in a book. And it's one of those stories that was all but lost to history. You can find out more about me and this book and my other books at my website. And also ask me any questions you might have, janethoffmanauthor.com. Thanks so much for inviting me to celebrate Founders Day with you. I appreciate it so much. Have a wonderful day.